this video, we are answering the question, who is St. Michael the Archangel? Let's get into it. What's up guys, this is Teresa. Thank you so much for coming to my YouTube channel. Go on down there, hit the like, hit the comment, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, hit all the buttons, do all the things. Today, we are talking about St. Michael the Archangel and his role in spiritual warfare. Who is St. Michael the Archangel? Many Christians and non-Christians alike are intrigued by the existence of angels. St. Michael the Archangel is a prominent angelic figure in Holy Scripture and across many cultures since the beginning of recorded history. First things first, we need to define the term angel. The word angel in Latin angelus or in Greek agalos stems from the Hebrew word that means one going or one sent. Angels are spiritual beings that are sent by God as intermediates between God and men. The word intermediate means being or occurring at the middle place, stage, or degree between extremes. I really like this definition because I think it does a great job of presenting a visual for us to consider when we think about spiritual warfare in heavenly places. As Ephesians 6 says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Now let's talk about angels and spiritual warfare. When we think about the chasm between heaven and earth and the spiritual battle that rages over the souls of humans, we must consider that God's holy angels are assisting us in this spiritual battle. Some of the angels rebelled against God and so fell into eternal darkness, but I'm referring specifically right now to the holy angels that declare Jesus Christ as Lord and who help humans come into the kingdom of God through Christ. The author of Hebrews declares that the holy angels are all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we know that he is our great high priest, under which all angels are subject to his authority. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. This is a quote from Hebrews chapter one. Overall, angels have three distinct purposes as referred to in Holy Scripture. Number one, angels are messengers to humanity. The references for this are in Genesis, Judges, Daniel, Luke. Angels are guardians of humanity. You can look into Genesis, Matthew, Hosea, Kings, and Acts. Angels are divine agents of God that serve as governors over aspects of the world. This can be found in 2 Samuel, 1 Chronicles, and John. Who is St. Michael the Archangel? It is clear from Holy Scripture that there is an order of hierarchy of angelic forces. The hierarchies are referenced in Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jude, 1 Thessalonians, Ephesians, Colossians, Daniel, and Revelation, just to name a few places. St. Michael the Archangel is a chief or prince angel who leads the other angels in the heavenly battle against the powers of darkness. In the end times when the Antichrist is loosed out of his prison, which is found in Revelation 20, St. Michael the Archangel will rise up and fight against Satan and all the evil powers of darkness in the world. The reference from Revelation parallels the battle that occurred in the heavenly places when Satan was initially cast out of heaven and thrown down to the world. Revelation 12 states, and there was a great battle in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. For now, Satan actively seeks the ruin of souls until the second coming of Jesus Christ, when Jesus will come to establish his eternal kingdom forever, and Satan and all evil forces will forever be cast into the lake of fire. Now let's discuss St. Michael's role. Overall, St. Michael the Archangel has four major purposes as evidenced in Holy Scripture. This is to lead spiritual warfare against Satan, to rescue faithful souls from Satan's grasp, particularly at the hour of death, to champion human causes that are for the purpose of building up the kingdom of God, and to encourage souls away from darkness and into humble repentance so that they may be reconciled to God. Now let's talk about intercessory prayer and angelic invocation. In chapter five of the book of Revelation, right before the angels begin to cry out in worship of the lamb who was slain, the passage describes that Jesus took a scroll and the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. In chapter eight of the book of Revelation, St. John describes his vision. An angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer, and he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. 
I think this is so beautiful. It's beautiful to consider how angels lift and carry our prayers up as fragrant incense to the throne of the living God. Is that not wild? Considering the angels' role as intermediates, would they not so enjoy lifting up praises of ours to God our Savior? What an image. When I think about the consistent biblical call that we have been given to intercede, to pray unceasingly, and to call upon the choirs of angels and saints in heaven when we pray, I think about how the angels and saints intervene for us and join with our voices in supplication to the Lord. The Bible says, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. This is in James 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That's 1 Thessalonians. Pray at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. This is in Ephesians 6. I'm sure you recognize that one. Now we need to talk for a second about the New Age and the Angelic. Y'all know I'm the disclaimer queen, so here's my disclaimer for this topic. It is common in modern occultism to be quite obsessed with angelology, angel numbers, all the things. You guys get it. It's imperative as a Christian to understand that we're called to focus our attention on the Lord and His will over our lives. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. Oftentimes, those obsessed with angelic communication and invocation are doing it from the perspective of attempting to seize occult power or knowledge. Biblically, we are encouraged to invoke the assistance of angels, but as you can see from the details here, the purpose is for protection and guidance for the faithful in the mission of building up the kingdom of God. The core of this is prayer. When we pray to God and we ask God to send his ministering spirits, which are angels, to guide, guard, and protect, that's all good. No issues there. The issue is the focus of the prayer. Oftentimes in the occult, people will focus their attention on the angel itself as a means of curiosity to connect with, explore, or study spiritual forces. This actually opens the person up to demonic paths because, let's face it, the angels who respond to these types of calls are not angels of God. They are demons with the intention to pull you away from the path of God and distract you from his will over your life. Satan and his demons offer all kinds of lying signs and wonders that mislead humans into a deeper curiosity about occult practices and engagement with the demonic. Satan himself disguises as an angel of light. So what is the antidote to getting trapped? by this deception, remain anchored to the word of God, daily prayer, and sacramental worship. If you are leaving the new age and you are looking to get fully anchored to Christ, I get it. You're probably really confused. You're disoriented, spiritually afflicted, all the things. I have an academy called the Clarity Accelerator Academy that actually helps you go through that process, get theologically grounded, shuck off what I call new age junk, and get fully anchored to Christ so that you can go on to use your gifts for the kingdom of God. So I want you to go on down there and click the, in the description below. There's a link to an application form. Fill that out and I'll get in touch with you and we can continue that conversation. All right, let's go back into St. Michael the Archangel. Let's talk now about the prayer to St. Michael. So as an example of proper angelic invocation, let's break down the St. Michael prayer. So when it comes to consideration of intercessory prayer, St. Michael the Archangel has a special role. Since he's one of the highest ranking angels and because he's the chief angel in the battle against Satan, his intercession is extremely effective in the realm of spiritual warfare. Another saint who's incredibly efficacious against the powers of darkness is the Blessed Virgin Mary. But that conversation is for another, probably entire article series, which, we could probably expect soon. So, but for now, I want to submit the prayer to invoke the divine help of St. Michael. This is an excellent prayer to memorize and utilize during heavy times of spiritual war in your life. And this is how it goes. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. So that is a prayer to St. Michael. So let's talk now about the blood of Jesus and spiritual war. So when it comes to salvation, Jesus Christ is our only mediator, advocate, and guide that's scriptural. When it comes to spiritual battle in this time of imperfection on this planet, during the grace period before Jesus comes back to establish his kingdom once and for all, we are commanded to pray unceasingly, to join our voices with all the communion of saints and all angelic and archangelic forces to worship the Lord. We are called into vigilance to be always prepared to provide an account of our salvation through the perfect blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and God is a God of community. We are not alone in this battle. We have all the saints who have gone before us, who intercede for us, even now. We have the support and guidance and protection of all the angels in heaven. We have our brothers and sisters in Christ, those who are currently alive, known as the church militant, to pray with us. 
Worship is our warfare. Thank you, Jesus, for laying down your life so that we may obtain the promises of your eternal inheritance. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. This is Colossians chapter 1. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I would also invite uh, those of you who are local to come join me next week, September 29th for Theology on Tap. Uh, we're gonna be hosting a conversation about this topic and I would love to see you there. It's gonna be hosted at St. Timothy Anglican Church. That's at 4301 Meadowbrook Drive in Fort Worth, Texas. And the zip code is 76103. All right, see you guys there.